welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. We're doing our continual foray into the new color correction tools of Final Cut 10.4. And Mark has some really cool stuff to show us relative to creating some cool black and white effects. Yeah, so what I like to do, and I've done this with a, with a photography, is you know, you can desaturate an image to make it black and white. But when you do that, it's applying a specific formula for mixing the different color channels of sure. red, green, and blue. Mm -hmm. And I would rather have more control over the black and white by choosing my own mix of the color Make channels. your own tonal maps, essentially. Yeah, exactly. So what I've done here in Final Cut is I have this shot, and I've added a color curves correction. Mm -hmm. And I want you to notice, like, let's say I just want to look at the green channel. So I'm going to bring down the red channel all the way and bring down the blue channel all the way. And you'd think I'm just looking at the green channel, but if we look in the RGB waveform, there's still red and blue in the shot. Yeah. So you wonder, like, well, what's going on? Why is that the case? So um, the way I'm going to show you is we're going to switch over just to the Luma uh, rather than RGB. And notice when I bring these up and down how the Luma isn't changing at all, okay? Just color information. The color information, but the Luma isn't changing at all. Right. So the reason that's happening is this preserve Luma checkbox. So we notice if that's checked, uh, if I make any changes to these curves, that the luminosity values stay the same. And that's usually what you want. But in this case, I don't want that. So check this out. I'm going to go back to the RGB uh, parade and uncheck this. And now when I bring the red channel down, oh, look at wow. that. The red wow, look yeah, at that. The red completely disappears. And the blue completely disappears. Now you got almost okay. like a pure yeah. luminance signal now. Exactly. It's pure. It's, yeah, and I'm just looking at the green channel. Now that's a great start, but the next thing is I'd like to make it black and white. And you might think, oh, well, I'll just go ahead and I'll add a, you know, a color wheels or a color board, and I'll take the master saturation all the way down. And the problem is, if you notice in the RGB parade, all this is doing is applying the same standard mix of color channels back again. Yeah. So it's really not getting us anywhere. You don't want to do that. So, but I'm going to show you a better. In fact, remember what that looked like. It's shrinking the green channel down. It's bringing the other ones back up. And that's not what we want at all. I'm going to disable that even though I just brought it back. So instead what I'm going to do is go to the effects browser for color. And I'm going to apply the hue saturation effect. And the reason I'm going to do that, let's go back to the video inspector. The hue saturation effect, watch when I bring saturation down here. Notice how the green channel didn't change at all oh, I see that, that time. Yeah. It didn't change at all. All it did is add red and blue, matching luminosity perfectly in order to change it to black and white. So this black and white image looks quite a bit different than the one that has the mix of the color channels. Sure. Okay? So once I've done that, I can go back to color it curves. Looks richer. Well, it's, it, so the green channel contains the most detail right. uh, in an image, and the red channel contains most of the skin tone. So if I brought the red channel up here, we'd see her get quite bright because right. that's where a lot of the skin tone is in there. And the blue channel contains most of the noise. Yeah. So you could bring that in, but you're bringing in more noise. And you're also bringing different tonalities in. So I can freely mix and match these. And also I can, you know, add points on the curve and just decide how, how I want to adjust this um, curve, not only do I have that, I can choose which channels to add in. So I have complete flexibility on um, how to create the black and white effect and bring, really, you know, really bring out our skin tones, for example. Well, not skin tones, but bring out that skin detail right. or that hair detail. So once I've done that, I'm just going to add one thing on top of this. I've got this great control here, but if I add another color curves correction, and this time for this one, I'm going to leave Preserve Luma intact. Because what I can do now is, that, for instance, if I just take the blue and I drag down or I drag up a little bit, I can add a tint effect to that black and white. And what's neat about this, because I'm leaving the endpoints alone, blacks are still black right. and whites are still white. So this background is nice and black and the blacks in her shirt are still black, but her teeth are nice and white and the tint is only affecting the midtones. So I can use this uh, customized grayscale look to start, and then I can tint it in a very precise way and create what I think is, can be a very beautiful look uh, that you could never do before the tools in 10.4. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So thanks, Mark. I just I learned a bunch of stuff um, I can do with, with curves now. Curves are amazing. <laughs> yes. So if you want to learn more about color correction, he's got the best color correction tutorial on these tools, bar none. You want to check it out on our website and check us out on another episode of MacBreak Studio. We'll see you next time.